Hey, I'm Kobe. And I'm Joel. We're organizers for Voter Choice Massachusetts, and we are here to teach you how to be effective advocates for ranked choice voting. This video is based on the Voter Choice Massachusetts elevator pitch. Click the link in the description to follow along with that. What is the number one myth about ranked choice voting, Joel? Well, some people say it's confusing, but that's simply not true. It's not true, and we know this because we can look at elections where ranked choice voting is used. For instance, in Maine's first ever statewide use of ranked choice voting, the Maine 2018 Democratic gubernatorial primary, 87% of voters chose to rank their ballots. Yeah, and in Minneapolis, 95% of respondents said that it was easy and intuitive. So we know that voters overwhelmingly use the rankings, and we know that they say it's easy and intuitive. And of course, we sort of know that kids can walk into an ice cream shop and say it's my first favorite flavor, second favorite flavor, and third favorite flavor. So we know that ranked choice voting is not complicated, but it is totally possible to explain it in a way that makes it sound complicated. And so what we're here to do today is teach you how to be an effective advocate for ranked choice voting in your community. Are you ready, Joel? Absolutely. All right, so we're gonna pretend we're out canvassing today. And Joel, what are the three C's of canvassing? Well, that would be confident, concise, and closing. We have to be confident, concise, and closing. So when we're out there canvassing, we're gonna stand with our clipboard at our side, open body language, and we're gonna do our intro, which is very conversational and relaxed. We don't have to go out there and say, hey, do you wanna save democracy? We can say something like, hi, I'm Joel, and I'm organizing for ranked choice voting. Nice. So, the whole goal of doing an intro is to get eye contact and, and have someone plant their feet and start a conversation. So I do what Joel usually just did as I walk out there. I say, hey, I'm Kobe. I'm organizing for ranked choice voting. Now, some people are going to say, thank you. That's awesome. I love ranked choice voting, right? And I've literally had somebody walk up to me and give me a hug and say, thank you for organizing for this issue. I've been waiting for this, right? But that's not most people. So most people are going to say, what is ranked choice voting? Yeah. And Joel, I'm curious, what is ranked choice voting? Well, ranked choice voting is a simple upgrade to the way we vote. Ranked choice voting is a simple upgrade to the way we vote. Now, here's the thing, folks. It is entirely true to say that ranked choice voting is an instant runoff system whereby if no candidate has a majority of the vote in the first round, then we eliminate the last place candidate and transfer those votes to those voters' second choice until we have a majority. That is true. It is not the best way to be an advocate for ranked choice voting. The way you concisely explain ranked choice voting is by saying ranked choice voting is a simple upgrade to the way we vote. Right now, go for it, Joel. Well, right now, you're forced to choose one candidate. But with ranked choice voting, you can rank the candidates. First choice, second choice, third choice, in the order you prefer. Perfect. So it took us three sentences to explain ranked choice voting and in a way that, that makes sense to people, right? And so we've been confident and we've been concise in describing ranked choice voting. Now, here's the next part of this, is that people who are watching this video, or me and Joel, anyone who's advocating for ranked choice voting is a little bit different than most people, right? We're thinking about the systemic consequences of voting, but most people aren't walking around thinking about that, and so what we have to do is make the experience relevant to the voter. We have to tell them, here's why this is important. Right? And the reason that this is important connects to the voter's experience. So usually what we'll do is say something like, have you ever wanted to, um, to vote for someone who's not the front runner in a race and been told you're wasting your vote? Yeah, you know, um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania and uh, a couple of my friends were thinking of voting for third party candidates and a lot of people were expressing to them that they're, you know, throwing away their vote. That exactly, exactly. And so, uh, with ranked choice voting, what we're going to do is empower you to choose exactly who you want to vote for and rank backup options after that. Now think about this from the candidate's perspective. Right now we tell a lot of candidates, don't run, don't participate, or wait your turn, right, because there's a fear of them splitting the vote with a similar candidate. With ranked choice voting, we can actually empower more candidates to get involved, so you and I as voters have more choice on the ballot. So this part of the wrap is key right because we're con we're asking someone what we call a check-in question right so we're giving them the wrap but then at some point we kind of stop draw them back into the conversation by connecting it to their real experience and then telling them how we're going to solve that problem by empowering them to choose who they really want to vote for and Joel what's the final part what's the one skill we haven't used in our canvas wrap yet I believe that would be be closing here's why closing is important it is awesome to go talk about this nifty idea we have to improve the voting system, right? 
but it does not matter unless we're adding supporters, growing capacity, and getting closer to winning ranked choice voting. So Joel, what's the last part of the wrap? Well, just summarize. So number one, ranked choice voting is about empowering you as a voter. Number two, it's empowering more candidates to run. Uh, so we can have a truly vibrant democracy. That's something you can get behind, right? Yeah. Awesome. And as soon as you get that yes, as soon as you sort of assume support, that's work you can get behind, right? And ask, and someone says yes, you've just unlocked the door to all of the resources that we need to win the movement for ranked choice voting. It doesn't matter if you're asking for someone to sign up, to join you for a bill hearing, a lobby day, uh, to put a signature to get you on the ballot for $100, for $1,000, it's all the same. We have to ask for support. Are you ready to win the movement for ranked choice voting, John? I am. Let's go do it. Boom. All right, <clears throat> turn the way to go. Go. <laughs>